Those that are being killed right now in Gaza are inshallah being taken as martyrs, as shaheed. Those that are given the highest reward in paradise, Jannah to Firdaus inshallah. In this video, I want to give you a different perspective of the conflict that's currently taking place in Gaza and the massacre that's happening, especially from someone that's been in war for the last seven years. I want you to see the situation from a different point of view, from a point of view that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in his book, the Quran, and a point of view that we should be analyzing from the Sunnah of our Prophet The images coming out of Gaza are so difficult and so hard to digest. And subhanAllah, seven Seven years of me working here in this war zone as a doctor, I've seen the worst of it. But what I want to talk to you about in this video is what led us to this point where subhanAllah, like some people have said that we are almost 2 billion Muslims, we're 2 billion Muslims almost, and we can't even get a bottle of water to those 2 million that are being slaughtered in Gaza without the permission of Israel. That Israel can cut off water and electricity and cut off everything. And we, two billion people, are overpowered by Israel population of what? A few million? What has led us to get to this point? Why do we think, why do, are we misled by our big numbers? Ultimately, it's the failing of the Ummah that has led us to this point. Like a Prophet said in a hadith, a day will come when the whole nations will get together around a, ra a table and divide up the Muslims like they sat down to eat, to feast. And our Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because we'll be low in numbers? And our Prophet said, no, you'll be huge in numbers. But SubhanAllah, now we're seeing what our Prophet meant by this. We are huge in numbers, but our numbers mean nothing. And it's because we have strayed from the Quran and the Sunnah. We have deviated from our path. We have gone astray. And this is what's led to our current situation. And because of our failures, the Ummah is suffering. The Ummah is being slaughtered, not only in Gaza. Gaza, mashallah, the brothers and sisters in Gaza have done a good job to get the news out. But there are many places around the world the Ummah is suffering, like in China, like in India like in Russia and, and the Balkans, in Syria, and I can go on and on and on. Now, I want you to see from another point of view. Yes, we are seeing the horrible scenes coming out of Gaza. Now let's put ourselves in their position. The reality, my brothers and sisters, is the people of Palestine are those that have been resisting the oppression that have been trying everything they can to defend the Holy Land, the oldest, holiest site in Islam, the third holiest site currently. They, those oppressed people, limited numbers with limited resources, have been doing the job of the Ummah and defending with whatever ability they have and resisting the occupation and the oppression. And SubhanAllah, if you look at it from this point of view, you realize that Allah is rewarding them. Now, what do I mean? Because Allah tells us in the Quran that He takes from amongst us shuhada, martyrs. Those that are being killed right now in Gaza are inshallah being taken as martyrs, as shaheed. Those that are given the highest reward in paradise, Jannah to Firdaus. Those that enter paradise without reckoning. My brothers and sisters, let's put things into perspective. Why are we here in this world? A lot of us have become deviated and lost our purpose and we're thinking that we're here in this world to gain the success of this world, to become that teacher, to become that doctor, to get that car, to earn that house, to pay that mortgage. You're lost. Allah has sent us to, in this world to test us, to see which one of us are sincere so that He can reward us with paradise. We are here in this world for the hereafter, not for this world. So actually, my brothers and sisters, those that are being taken as martyrs now are the ones that are successful. And you guys that are sitting comfortably in the West chasing this dunya are the ones that have lost. And you should be worried about yourself 
more than you worry about those that are being taken as shuhada. Now I'm talking as someone that's been here, that's lived in the West and that Allah allowed me to sacrifice everything I had in the West as a doctor and come to a war zone because Allah gave me the understanding that we're not here in this world to gain the success of this world. Alhamdulillah, I reached the top of my class. Alhamdulillah, I achieved and became a doctor in the West. But that's not the success of this world. Nor is it the success of, this, of the hereafter. Because if you have a true understanding of the religion, you realize the success of this world and the hereafter lies in achieving what Allah and our Prophet spoke about. Is striving and struggling in Allah's path, is serving the, the Ummah. That's the success of this world and the hereafter. And if you're not on that path, then you failed yourself and you failed the Ummah. And that's what's happened right now, my brothers and sisters. So stop, my brothers and sisters. And think about it like this. Don't worry about those that have been taken as shaheed. Yes, it's obligation upon you to try your best to do whatever you can to stop the oppression. But don't think Allah is not aware of what's happening to our brothers and sisters. <laughs> I'll give you an example of Ibrahim when his whole community got together and they plotted and planned to throw Ibrahim into the fire. And those that were observing this thought this, subhanAllah, is a severe punishment. One of the biggest fires that even birds couldn't fly over it without dropping into it. But Ibrahim was sitting in that fire in tranquility, in peace. And this is what I want to relate to you of being in war and I've seen this so much that you see a Mujahid who's in the heat of the battle, in the most difficult situation and Allah takes him like this in a peaceful way. Like some of the most horrible images that we've seen coming out of Gaza is children that have been blown to pieces, families that have been shredded. But SubhanAllah, I always stop and think, if I was to be taken as Shaheed, what would be the best way that I could be taken? The best way would be I die instantly without feeling nothing. And then SubhanAllah, I'm in the hearts of the green bird, entering paradise without reckoning, without going through the day of judgment. Yes, for those like me and you watching this, it's horrible and it's horrific. It's a suffering for us because we have to watch this. But for the Shaheed, it's one of the best ways for him to die. So in actual terms, my brothers and sisters, if you really look at this conflict differently, it's me and you that's being tested. It's those that are still alive to see this that are going to be questioned about it. It's our sins that has led us to this. But for my brothers and sisters in Gaza, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take them as shaheed and reward them for their patience and their suffering and for them standing firm and being resistance against oppression and defending the Holy Land. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward all of them with Jannat al Firdaus and give, give them the most painless death so that they don't suffer and they get into paradise straight away. But for me and you, the test has just begun. And for you living in the West, chasing that dream, living that life, spending that wealth that Allah has entrusted you with and luxuries and fancy foods and restaurants, you're the one that should fear. You should be worried. So really think about this, my brothers and sisters. Change your thinking and correct yourself now before the time comes where you see the angel of death and you'll be saying to Allah, or you'll be saying to the angel, oh please, please, just give me respite. Just give me a little bit of time so I can go back and I can give in sadaqah and I can give in charity. Oh please, just give me a bit of time. I'll correct myself. I'll follow the messenger. I'll follow the message. It's too late. It's going to be too late then. Correct yourself, my brothers and sisters. Fix up because it's only when every single one of us individually realize that we've failed ourselves and we've failed the ummah, that's when victory will come in this world and the hereafter. For my brothers and sisters, it's just a reminder to myself and to all of you, really check yourself, correct yourself, come back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And through that, we'll gain eternal success, inshallah.